Folks, Doug Blake with Body Design University. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about um, something that a student had asked me. And this is in chapter 11 of the ACE 6th edition textbook. And it was really more of a question of how to, how to deal with uh, confusion about some of the tables that are in chapter 11. Chapter 11, very important chapter. And uh, let me go ahead and pull up the uh, pull up the specific table that we're talking about. It's table 11 for now. Remember, in chapter 11, if you've if you've been in here, or if you haven't gotten in here, when you get to chapter 11, um, let me start here um, on page 470. We start with the uh, the two sides of the IFT model, and Ace will tell you when you read through this that. Basically, it's in chapter eight that you learn a certain amount of information about the IFT model, the cardio respiratory training side of the house and the muscular training side of the house. In this case, a student had asked me um, on the muscular or excuse me, on the cardiovascular training side, table 11, four, they were, they were kind of confused about how the table is set up and what it's really trying to trying to tell you. And so uh, the answer, I'm going to give you like the three second answer to the question. The problem is that on the digital copy, uh, for sure, on the digital copy, you'll notice that it says continued on the next page. And so re in reality, table 11.4 is a long, it's a long table. It's a long table, right? From the columns themselves are long that have been broken up into two pages. It's a really unfortunate unfortunate split because the um the reality is is that when you look at it and here's what i want to do with you let me let me hone in here focus in here a little bit um sample performance training program now remember remember this is uh the the highest level in the ift model on the cardio respiratory side which is the performance level right um and so uh, this is the third or the highest level. Technically, you'd be using this for athletes if you're going to be doing programming. But here's what the student was basically saying. I don't understand five sessions per week, but we're doing one session and one session and then a three. And they were sort of confused um, on how this is to be read. And I get it because there is a sort of a lot of information crammed into it. So let me just explain it to you. If if you're good with it, then then great. But a lot of folks I know have some struggles reading reading these uh, reading these tables sometimes. So basically, what table eleven four is saying that here's your training parameters, your uh, first week. Now remember, these are progressions in this in this part of the in this part of the book. You have the uh, training focus program design. And there's going to be the progressions. In other words, the weekly progressions. Week one, you do this. Week two, you do this. Week three, you do this. And this is how you progress an individual um, through the programming in the performance at the performance level, okay? Performance training. So let me go ahead and pull it up again. Basically, all this, all this table is saying is that you're going to do in week one five actual workouts on the cardiovascular side. Three of those workouts, three per week, are going to be done in the zone one sessions where what is the intensity? Less than VT1, right? And a uh, uh, rating of perceived exertion of three to four. And you would have already learned this, that you know the, the ventilatory threshold method for training intensity is sort of the standard. It's one of the easiest ways to um, to deal with training intensity. It's one of the best ways to do it if you really want to do it according to physiological parameters uh, that you can actually look at and 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 determine where the individual is at. So ACE is big on the ventilatory threshold methodology, and so they're going to tell you that zone one, which is below VT one, where is zone two? between VT1 and VT2, and then zone three, right, is above VT2. So a zone one session, you're going to do three of those for the week, and that's three of the five sessions, right? One session, right, zone one sessions, three per week. One session of those three, one of those three sessions is going to be a long run, 
another, the second of those three sessions is going to be a 90 minute run. And then another, the third session is going to be a 60 minute run. So that's basically what, what this column, these two columns in week one um, and these rows are telling you, right? So zone one sessions, but when you're doing performance training, you're going to be training that individual, those individuals in all three zones, or, or, or you're going to have zone one sessions, zone two sessions, zone three sessions. And that's all the table is basically selling, telling you is that uh, for the most part, you, the majority of your training time for athletes, especially cardiorespiratory athletes that are like marathon runners, longer distance athletes, uh, still the majority of their training time, their training volume during the week should be, the majority of it should be at or below VT1 levels for extended lengths of time. Um, this is why in this concept of base training, the main focus is on developing more and more time, right, in uh, the zone one or less than V, uh, lower than VT1 um, zone one training training. Uh, session. So zone one sessions, there's three of them. And this is what the three of them look like. Okay. So I, you know, again, Monday, I do a two hour long run, right? Now, remember I'm training five times this week, Monday, I do this long run, two hours and 30 minutes, maybe on Wednesday or Thursday, I do a 90 minute long run, but I got to keep my heart rate down below VT1. And then um, my last session, maybe on Friday or Saturday, I'll do a 60 minute run. But remember, that's only three workouts. The next row across here, right, are going to be the zone two sessions. So remember, five total sessions, three of them are in zone one. Only one is going to be in zone or a zone two session. And now here's the intensity for zone two sessions. They want you to do a warm up and a cool down and your recovery intervals, right? Because remember, if you remember in the previous chapters, I, again, I believe it's chapter eight. Uh, how do you, how do you do a zone two training session or how do you train interval type of training? You're in, you're in zone one below VT one, and then you're jumping into zone two, right? You're increasing your intensity and then you're backing it off or into what we call your recovery intervals. You're at v below VT1 and you're doing that for however long you're doing it. And then you jack it up, jack up your heart rate and spend whatever amount of time you're doing it. Boom, in VT2, right? So now you're breathing harder. And then your recovery interval is back in VT1. That's all this is saying. Your work intervals, right? So this particular workout, this zone two workout has your warm up cool down recovery intervals in zone 1 easy enough but your work intervals whatever they are which you're going to see over here in this column they are at you know VT1 but less than well, excuse me above they're between VT1 and VT2 look i'm not saying that this thing was written and this you know the best best um portion of it laid out here I probably would have, if I was, you know, writing the textbook, I probably would have put it all on a single page and expanded it and made it a little bit easier to understand. So I get why it can be a little, little confusing. So in this case, your work intervals are in zone two between VT1 and VT2, right? So remember, make sure you, you understand the, the equal sign, the correlation below VT1 heart rates are zone one training heart rates. Those are the intensity. Those are the heart rates at V below VT1. VT1 and 2, between VT1 and 2, you know, that's zone 2. Just, um, you need to make sure that you understand what these correlations are. What is the interval, though, in VT? What does that interval um, heart rate look like? Well, three, uh, three four-minute intervals at a one- to one and a half ratio. In other words, three four minute intervals with a rest, with a work to rest ratio of one to 1 1.5. Hope that makes sense. Four minute working intervals, six minute recovery, 60 minute workout with warm down and cool down. Let me say this again. 
your zone two session as a warm up and your cool down are going to be at lower heart rates below VT1. When you do your recovery, right? Because there is a work recovery ratio. Remember that from the previous chapters. There's a work recovery ratio. If my work is one minute in zone two, right? I'm running, jogging at, you know, let's just say, let's just say my VT1 heart rate is 100 beats per minute. I'm training at 110, 120 beats per minute, right? Because now I'm in zone two, right? And I'm doing that. And if I do that for one minute, right? And I'm in that in of that, that, higher intensity for one minute, my rest, the ratio of one to 1.2 means one, 1 1.5 means that if I work for a minute, then for a minute and a half is my recovery. So that's why I want you to understand these numbers. You're going to do three, basically three intervals, right? And they are four minute work intervals. So I'm going to do three intervals my work interval is going to be for four for four minutes. So I'm going to work for four minutes, boom, and I'm going to recover for six, right? Because what's 1.5 times four? It's six, one to one and a half, right? If my four minutes work time is the one, I simply multiply four times one and a half, and that gives me the recovery time. Does that make sense? Four minutes of work, six minutes of recovery. And I do that three times. Makes sense. I do my warm up, whatever, five minutes, whatever my warm up is. So let me let me get back here and show you what this looks like. Okay. That zone two session is really pretty straightforward. And you've done this, you've probably done this yourself. Okay. I do my warm up and I'm just gonna let's just say I'm doing I'm doing sprints. I'm doing my run. Um, and I warm up, I jog for a little bit. Ain't working hard. I'm not breathing heavy. I'm still below VT1 and I do my warm up, whatever that is, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever, whatever you're going to do it at. Then once I'm done with my warm up, I am now going to do three, three complete work rest intervals. Okay. So here I am. I do my warm up, I'm running around the track, and then I start kicking up my speed, right? And I'm doing now for the next four minutes, I get right into my zone two. In other words, I know what my heart rate is at VT one, right? Let's say it's a, again, just for the sake of argument, it's a hundred beats per minute. I know that already got my heart rate monitor, warm, warm up heart rates at about 90, you know, 95, got my warm up. Boom. It starts hovering towards, you know, hovering in the mid upper nineties. And then it's time to start my intervals. I know my first interval is going to be for four minutes. So what do I do? I check my heart rate monitor and wham, I get it up to 100, 100, 105, maybe 110 beats per minute. Boom. And I rock it for four minutes, right? And I'm looking, as soon as I get to four minutes, what do I do? I'm at a one to one and a half ratio. Now I'm going to recover for how long? Six minutes. Get the idea? Four minutes on, six minutes off. That's what that progression is saying. And I and I know I got to get my heart rate back down below 100 and do and now jog for uh, for six minutes. Okay, get, see this. Six minutes is up. What do I do? I do it again because I'm doing three of those, right? Three times four minute work intervals. So three of these intervals. Okay, so I do it. Boom, four minutes on. Boom, boom, boom four minutes, 110 beats per minute, something like that. Whew, six minutes recover below VT1. That's the second one. Okay, whoo, Ben, I'm ready to do it again. One more time. That gives me my third three times four, okay? Three times four minute intervals. So four minutes on, right? I did three of those. Now I do my uh, cool down. And that should get me into my 60, roughly 60 minutes. So if I do three, three of these, four minutes, six minutes, each of these guys in total is a 10 minutes. I'm doing three of them. That gives me 30 minutes, right? So four minutes on, six minutes off. That is a 10 minute for each cycle, right? For each cycle of one to one and a half ratio. 
Um, three of those gives me 30 minutes. It's obviously going to be a little bit more than that, but roughly. So the actual work intervals will take me approximately 30, 35 minutes. If I do a 10 minute warm up, a 10 minute cool down or whatever, 10, 15 minutes, basically they're saying you should uh, accomplish a 60 minute workout with warm up and cool down. That's all that's saying. So I hope that makes sense. The zone two session is going to involve three of these intervals. And then look, and then all you're doing at that point is the next week, the next week, what do you do? Well, I'm going to do my, you know, and by the way, I haven't even done my zone three session yet. That's the problem with the way they, the way they did this, they should have put zone three sessions here, but you get the idea. And all I'll do is I'll progress week after week and I'll add, um, I'll add another interval into it. I'll do four of these four minute on six minute off intervals. So now let me get over to here. So that was four, that was four workouts for the week. Where is my fifth workout? It's on the next page. It's a zone three session. Okay. It's a zone three session, which is what? Uh, two sets of three times 60 second intervals with a one to three ratio. I hope this makes sense. Intensity for zone three is going to be the same, pretty much the same as uh, zone two, other than what? Where is zone three? It's above VT2. So now you have a interval training session, one interval training session during the week where your intervals are within zone two, and then one of your um, interval training sessions, right, is going to be in zone three, which is above VT2. Well, what does it look like? Here's what it looks like. Two sets of three, three 60 second intervals. What are the intervals going to be? It's going to be a one to three ratio, which means that for each minute, right? For each minute, you're going to take a three minute recovery. That's why they put 60 seconds work. 180 is three minutes, right? Uh, recovery, a 10 minute recovery between each set. How many sets are you doing? Two sets. So I'm going to I'm going to do three of these intervals. Bam, bam, bam. I'm going to do three. Of the, I'm going to do boom. One minute, three minute rest. Boom. One minute, three minute recovery. One minute, three minute recovery. That's my three times sixty second intervals. Now I'm going to do two of two of those sets. But after I do that third sixty second interval, and I do my one hundred and eighty second recovery. I recover for 10 minutes and where's my recovery at VT one. So 10 minute recovery between your sets. And then, then you go back and you do another set of three of these, bam, one minute on three minutes, recovery, one minute on three minute recovery, one minute on three minute recovery, which leads you into your cool down anyway. And that's how you, that's how you read that's how you read these tables. Again, I can definitely understand how if you're going through this and this one student was a little confused, I get it. But that's how that's how that works. By the way, use your mouse, pause me and go back and look at it again. Remember, when you're doing an interval, when you do interval training is always a work to rest ratio. The ratio is either one to one and a half one to two, one to three. In some cases, um, it could be if you're doing like lactic acid buffering training, it could be one to five, okay? It can be a minute of work. And then in that case that you saw with that zone three uh, training session, um, one minute and then a three minute rest, you could, right? You could a do a two minute. It would be kind of hard, but you can do a two minute um yeah, I guess you'd have to be really fit to do that. Let's say a minute. By the way, even a minute just into VT2 is pretty hard. If I'm doing what's known as lactic acid, bu lactic acid buffering type of training, technically I'm trying to actually push up into even higher than just hitting VT2. I'm actually trying to move into the higher ranges of VT2. I might only be able to do 30 seconds. And then I would do a one to five ratio in some cases um, with some athletes I've done that. Um, where now you're doing 30, uh, 30 seconds on one, right? That's the one. And then 
five times that length of time, which gives you what? 150 seconds, which is almost just under three minutes. 30 seconds hard, hard and roughly two and a half to three minutes of recovery. Think about that and then doing that in multiple sets. So I hope this hope this is helpful. Look, as always, um, the goal here is to help you to understand the particular topic that we're going over so that you can pass you know, the test by answering these questions. Um, if you have not done so um, and you do want more information, you can let us know by clicking on the link below. Um, as always, let us know how we can be of assistance. One of the things that does help is, well, first off, going ahead and subscribing to the YouTube channel itself. Go to the Facebook group as well. But the other thing that really helps is if, you know, when you went through the video, you understood it, made sense, just type the word understand below in the comment section. It just helps us um, to know that you actually went through it, spent some time trying to understand. And by the way, if you didn't understand it, then you got to tell us anyway, right? By leaving a comment there and saying, could you elaborate a little bit more on this? Or I didn't understand what you said. And you can, of course, put the little timestamp on there, which some people do, which we truly appreciate. As always, if you need assistance, reach out and let us know. Have a great weekend. See you.